Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. We are going to continue our study. We're going to go through James. We've been going through James for the last few days. We've been we've been probably about 20, almost a month now we've been studying James. It's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful thing that we can learn from God's Word and how to live as God would want us to live. So let's open our Bibles to James chapter 5. We are we are now in the very fifth, in the fifth chapter, the very last chapter of the Bible, or the book of James, not the Bible, the book of James, from Revelation 22 is the last chapter, but the book of James, chapter 5, we're going to be looking at that, we're going to be talking about it. This first section of scripture is called Warning to the Rich. We we want to look at this and, and, and decipher what is going on here. So, uh, let's go here. If you are there, I hope you are there in chapter 5, verse 1. It says this. Now I'm using, once again, I'm using the modern English version. We've done this version through the whole study. Uh, so we are have continuity of the Word of God. So we're going to do this study. We're going to finish this, this section out. There is uh, probably four verses, five verses in this section. We are going to, we're going to read these, this section. We're going to talk about it. Hopefully it is going to take one video to do this. If not, take as many as it takes, right? Okay. Chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Come now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their cor corrosion will be a witness against you. And you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Indeed, the wages that you kept back by fraud from the laborers who harvested your fields are crying in the and the cries of those who harvested have entered in, into the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wayward. You have nourished your hearts as in the in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the righteous man who does not resist you. Now, now we are going to look at this verse by verse. It says, "Come now, you rich men, weep and howl your for your miseries that shall come upon you." Verse 2 says, your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten. Now understand, this is a precursor of what he's talking about, how they live their lives. And down here he says, he says, uh, you have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wayward. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the righteous man who does not resist you. So how they live their life. They live their life basically by the law of sin and death. Now, if they have lived their life by the law of sin and death, then this is the the result of how they've lived. You've lived your life. You've lived your life in pleasure on the earth and have been wayward, double-minded, wayward. Okay, wayward being they were not really where they needed to be. They were wayward people. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. So they have nourished their hearts with the sinful things of life. And they were wayward. You have condemned and killed the righteous man who does not resist you. So he, they have, in a sense, doing all of these things, have, have killed the righteous man. Living a life that is led by the law of sin, living a life and nourishing themselves by the law of sin. They're wayward in chapter one, the double minded. Okay, they're wayward, double minded. Because of that, because of that, they're saying that James is saying it, it, it is a warning to the rich or warning to people who, now if you think about, if you think about a rich person. Now, I'm not saying all rich people are like this, but 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 if you think about someone who has everything that they ever need, 
those kinds of people or people some of those kinds of people not everybody not every person not every rich person every person that has everything they ever wanted but there are people that have everything they want that have no desire or see no need for God and this is what the rich people were like they had no they didn't see a need for God they didn't see a need for the the uh, the the word of God the law of law of God the law of the 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 word of God they didn't they didn't see a need for it so they because of that they lived their life the way they wanted they lived their life the way that they felt they wanted to do it now understand that as we do this and as we think about this it is a question that is is coming back to me as a person it should come back to us all of us as a person what kind of person am I what kind of person am I do I live my life to my own way my own thinking my own desires my own feelings my own emotions do I live my life as though I am putting away or putting aside the law of God putting aside his word putting aside his presence am I doing that because that's what they were doing they were putting aside the law of God they were putting aside the way that God the the, the, the word of God the, the leading of God the calling of God they're putting that all aside to live a life <clears throat> for themselves now some people will say well they're not really saved well that doesn't say that they are in this passage it just says, says that they are living a life that is contrary to God's word living a life to contrary to God's law because they live this way all of their stuff is gonna be burned up it says, come now you rich men weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you so they, God is not saying you are gonna be in heaven he is not saying that he is not saying that at all miseries that are going to be heaped upon you your riches are corrupted why let's just let, 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 let's stop there your, your riches are corrupted your garments are moth-eaten why why this is an indication here that these people that James is writing about did not trust God did not live for God did not trust in his word because when we are living in according to God, if we're living what God wants us to do and doing what God wants us to do, the Bible says we are we are we are placing treasures in heaven. We are we are laying up treasures in heaven. That's what the Bible says. The rich man, their their riches are corrupted. Their garments, see, we'll be getting a new garment in heaven. We'll have a new garment. And all this is in the book of Revelation. We're not going to study that book at this time, but that all this stuff's in the book of Revelation. Their garments are moth-eaten. Their garments are no good. Their garments are not fit. Okay? The heavenly garment is what we want to wear. That's the one that is fit. That's the one that God would want us to have when we go meet him. The rich man's garment is corrupted. His riches are corrupted. His garment is moth-eaten. It's no good for anybody. Why is that? Because they live their life to themselves. They live their life to for their own gain, for their own desires, for their own uh, for their own personal gain. Okay. Your gold and your silver are corroded. That means it doesn't have. If gold and silver is corroded, then it's really it's still worth gold and silver, but it's not worth as much as it was. Okay. It's losing its value because we have they have lived their life the way they want the riches they've laid up is not of God the riches they've laid up is not what God wanted for them that's what this is about now this begs us a question what kind of thing are we doing what are we doing as believers what are you doing what am I doing how are things going in my life and in your life that would indicate that God is happy with us that God desires what we are doing that God loves what we're doing what in us what are we doing that would would indicate that God is with us well 
and we're laying up riches in heaven. We're going to get a new garment. We're going to sing a new song. All those things. It's all in the book of Revelation. The only way we're going to do that, the only way that's going to happen is by living in the Spirit of God. The book of Romans. How will you know that you're, you are of God if the Spirit of God is in you? The Spirit of God can only be in you if you are living according to God's Word and you are a born-again believer. That's the only way. The warning to the rich section here says that these people were not like that. They trusted in themselves. They trusted in what they knew. They trusted in their in their, in their talents and their in their in their intelligence and in their intellect. They did not trust in God. How did they how did they get their riches by their own gain, by their own ingenuity, by their own business sense, or whatever the case may be? Basically, this is saying that this was this was built. These people was built. These people were built by the law of sin. They were they were led and built by the law of sin, because it says that their their garments are, are mouth eaten, their gold and silver is corroded, their riches are corrupt, and there's going to be misery heaped upon them. So that's a warning to us. What are we doing? What are we doing with our life? We don't have to have a lot of money to have this warning touch our heart. What we do have to have, though, is we have to have a heart that is open to God and listening to God and God saying, listen to me. You have to understand that you have to trust me. You have to turn to me. You have to turn away from those things in your life. See, these people were, these people this warning to the rich, this warning to the rich, these people he's writing to, they were corrupt. The wages that you kept back by fraud from the laborers who harvested your fields are, are crying, and the cries of those who harvested have entered into the ears of the Lord of hosts. So their whole life, they were corrupted. They made money, sure. They were rich, sure. But how did they get it? By deceit, by, by, by uh, corruption, by lying, by cheating. That's how they got it. It's not God's way, folks. And all of these things, all of these cries have got it to the Lord of hosts. All of these prayers, all of these cries, all of these complaints have got it to the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts says that the miseries are going to be, shall be come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. And the corrosion will be a witness against you and you will be eaten, will be eaten your flesh like fire. So this is not a good place for them to be. This is not where they want to be. They don't want to be in in the way wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth place. They don't want to be in hell. They want to be, they should want to be with God. That's where we want to be. So it's a warning for us to really look at ourselves and say, what are we doing with God? What, what, what have we done with our salvation? What have we done with our eternal home? as far as sharing it. You see, we are rich in God. We are rich in God. Now, this kind of riches, we are to give it away. We're to give it away. We're to, we're to, we're to give away our salvation to and share it in a way of sharing it, giving it away in a way of sharing it with other people, giving it away in, in, in a way of, of being a witness of Jesus, being a witness of, of what he's done in our life. We're to, we're to give this away. We're to talk about it. We're to, we're to have people understand what God has done for us. We hold that back. And see, that, that is a warning to us too. When we hold that back, we hold that witness back, we hold that testimony back, we're no better than this rich person. You see? God wants us to be a witness. He wants us to, to go forth. He wants us to, to be bold before Him. He wants us to understand that the only way that the gospel is going to be spread is if someone tell them Okay, so that, that's my challenge for you today. Go before God, ask him to give you a desire to be a witness. And then go and tell, go and talk, go and tell people about Jesus. Talk to them about Jesus. Don't end up like the rich rich man who's corrupted, whose riches are corrupted. They're going to be burned up in fire just like their flesh. Don't allow that to be you. Go to God, talk to God. Allow God to minister to you and allow God to make you a witness for him. So until next time, this is Pastor Josh. God bless.